Someone has come and gone. Now we're entering the dark time of the year. The darkness is upon us. The cold is moving in. Once you're in the Southern Hemisphere, then you're getting all like flowers and light there. So yeah, darkness is a very special place in our mystical, magical vocabulary. It can also have some bad connotations. We're going to talk about that today as we walk together down creation's paths. Hello everyone, my name is Charlie and I am a crystal pagan druid and priest of Bridget. Hello everyone, my name is Brian, I am a crystal pagan druid and sous chef to the Dagda. Today we're going to be talking about mystical darkness. This is a phrase that comes in and out of popularity. There's a really good discourse going on about it right now, about some of the connotation to the uses of light and dark. I think they still have uses, but we're going to talk about that before we do. If you haven't already, don't forget to like, subscribe, follow, whatever the terminology is on the app you're currently listening to us on. We do original Christo Pagan and Druid content five days a week on this podcast. And you don't want to miss anything. You got a lot of cool stuff planned. All right, let's get into it. So let's start with the big bugaboo in this entire discussion before we move on. There is a lot of conversation going on about the potential racist connotations of using dark and light, white and black in a mystical, magical context. And 99.999% of the time, I agree. I don't think light is good and darkness bad. That dichotomy is problematic. Light can burn and darkness can provide shade, comfort and relief. So they're a mixed bag of metaphors. If you're exclusively using light to mean good or light or white to mean good and black or darkness to mean bad. Yeah. That has some racial connotations in it. This is something that I'm getting directly from the Jewish wisdom tradition. While yes, darkness is often used to mean bad things. God dwells in darkness. We, we are told in the Psalms that God builds his throne amidst the dark places in the hiding places where it is only the wisdom of the wise who can find him. So dark has much more of a connotation of mystery. This is not something we see in the tra tradition, this, this good, bad dichotomy. Also, heaven is described as being on fire in most version descriptions of heaven that are found in scripture. And hell is described as a place that is absent or devoid of light. We don't actually use the tradition as much as we think we do when we're relying on these images. It's important for us to remember the potential racial overtones or colorist overtones in the phrasing that we are using. I am using this term, the dark time of the year, to be quite literal. Here in the Northern Hemisphere, we are getting less sunlight every day. That can be an advantage to us for our practice and for our craft and allow us to draw on different energies than we would during the spring and summer months. That's what we're going to be talking about today, but we really do have to be careful not to further perpetuate negative stereotypes of whiteness, lightness, and goodness, because that is not the thing. We're going to talk about the bad parts of the light comes spring, trust me. goes back to those mental constructs and taking every opportunity you're given when you have to face one of your own to destroy it because a lot of those mental constructs are bad and limiting things. And it's also where context comes in. There's a lot of issues, especially with the traditional view of a lot of the people. Many of the first century saints, for example, that we talk about were probably dark skinned or black, but they have been whitewashed by Europe. It, it's hard to tell from the, the artwork. Augustine and St. Monica were both from Carthage. They're, they're from Northern Africa and it's possible they had lighter skin, but you know, they're not the lily white characters that they are portrayed in artwork. Origin was from Alexandria, Egypt. He may or may not have had lighter skin. We, we do a lot of harm because of this filter gap of the middle ages and the early dark ages, whitewashing a lot of our history and just presuming, oh, good person must to be white. The problem for a lot of people entering this time is 
seasonal affective disorder or other issues that can be caused by having less sunlight available to you to produce vitamin D and other nutrients that your body does need. We, as much as I want to pretend we don't, need, need sunlight. We do. We, we, like the plants and the other animals, are solar power. For me, I become much more active in my Bridget work because I will often share a glass of milk with her. I share a glass of milk with her every night. I need that even more. I might, I might actually bring that up to doing it earlier in the day because of that need for vitamin D and other nu nutrients that I'm not going to be getting because the sun's not there. There are some advantages to the darker tones. One, it's a lot easier to contemplate mysteries when there's not a lot of bright sunshine or warm temperatures tempting us to go outside. There's a lot of soul searching I think we need to do if we are going to have a valid mystical or magical practice. There are a lot of existential questions that we really don't want to face. There are a lot of just things that we want to pretend that we know the answers to that we really don't. There's a wonderful medieval text called The Cloud of Unknowing, which to me gives us such a beautiful metaphor for this experience. I, I love the idea of the cloud of unknowing, that when you enter into the divine realms, when you're entering into this magical, mystical place, you have to set down your preconceived notions. You have to admit, I, I don't know as much as I, I think I do or like to pretend that I do. That is a very liberating thing. Once you get the handle of it, I know people want answers. A lot of people turn to mysticism, spirituality, religion, and magic for answers. I'm going to try to talk to my ancestors to prove whether or not there is life after death. I'm sorry, it doesn't work that way. I'll be zen for a moment. Sometimes the best answer is a really good question. Yeah. Oh, it really, it is. really is. This Sawa and I spent a lot of time with various ancestors of mine when they came to visit. I will not know until I die if that was all in my head or a real experience. And that is a amount of existential dread that a lot of people can't cope with. They want to believe 100%, no, this really happened. I think it did. I think I have evidences that I can point to to show that these experiences are more than just things that are happening in my mind. And I've talked about those in the past, but entering this wonderful place where we can have a valid experience, because your experience is valid, but not make it a mandatory that everyone else believes you or that you have unlocked some secret to the universe is so vitally important in this work because we will not know you cannot know even if an angel appears to you in blinding splendor and tells you every answer to every question that you have that could have all been in your mind a practice i found very helpful for embracing the dark half being comfortable with not knowing is this you s set your room up so it can get as dark as possible. You're basically trying to create like a sensory deprivation experience. Or if you're able to go spend time in one of those sensory deprivation chambers, it's a great time to do that practice as well. But if you can at least get it as, as dark as you can, and you go into that space and you just sit there, meditate on being comfortable with being in that space, with just accepting everything and anything that is there just accepting that it is. It sounds like such a simple practice, but it's actually really hard because your body starts aching, it starts itching, distractions start coming up like crazy. And the first part, you're going to spend a lot of time trying to fight those distractions. But the actual point is accepting and being comfortable with the fact that your body is creating these distractions because it's screaming out in the silence. And that comfortable with, and you have to be comfortable with it. Then comes the second phase, the mind starts racing and tries to process anything and everything it can grab and you'll have all kinds of random thoughts and you'll have problems that you shelved away in the back of your head come up now because your brain's just like, I need something, I need anything. And you just have to accept the experience for what it is. And going through this process of accepting just that it is, stopping yourself from any judgment, stopping yourself from stopping it from happening and not trying to force it to a conclusion. Because that's the thing, what you're really fighting against is your instincts, that fight or flight. That's a strong feeling. It's a strong feeling. Everyone has it. It's instincts, it's in all of us. And 
in that moment, you're challenging those instincts and they will rise up and they will fight or flight through it. And learning to just hold yourself in the moment and doing neither, just accepting it at what it is. Through that practice, it makes it so much easier to embrace the dark path and to just accept things for what they are. It's like you were talking about earlier with people trying to force others to accept their personal oh, experience. Yeah. You have the flip side because that's the fight side. The flight side is where they will deny everything. Yeah. Years ago, ran with a person that was like that. They saw incredible things <laughs> along with the rest of us. And within hours, they had denied it because that's flight. They weren't comfortable with the accepting and embracing that dark half and accepting it for what it is. And they chose to run. It happens. As we said in our Sawan episode, for us, this time of year is governed by the Queen of the Wind and the Hunter. They give us two different models for how to enter into this darkness. The Queen of the Wind is a liminal goddess of prophecy. Of a lot of things, but prophecy, fate. She's good to work with for your oracle cards, your rune castings, your old, all of that. That is trying to discern from what little bit that you have the possibility, not to set in stone, the possible threads moving forward, how to maybe find paths. And it's a, a more receptive kind of, you're sitting with what you do know, looking to divine and weed through the evidence and the intuitions that you have on what is the path forward. I find that she is also very beneficial with planning or plotting and working through what it is that you are going to do once you have the time, energy, or ability to do it. The hunter, on the other hand, wanders off into the darkness seeking things. He may be seeking monsters that need to be slain. He may be seeking things that need to be brought back for the benefit of the community. But the hunter is the more active one moving out into the darkness, out into the cold, seeking what can be found there, seeking the riches that can be found there. These are the basic two modes that we can take in this time. Remember, you don't have to pick just one. Sometimes it might be appropriate for you to sit back and pull out your cards or what, whatever you use and meditate and think and try to divine what the right path is with this cloud of unknowing looming over everything. And sometimes it's good to wander out into the darkness and find your way around and work your way through. Knowing when and is right for which, which activity really does come down to you as an individual, what you have the stamina for, what you have the energy for, because the hunter's path is a lot more energy intensive because you not only have to find your way out into the darkness, but you have to find your way back. It's important, find your way back. Don't get lost out there discerning which of these is the best solution for you in this time. Let us play in an example of this. We have talked quite a bit about the harvest seasons, planting and harvesting. Working from that same analogy and with the information Charlie just shared with us, this would be the time where you sit back and you go, okay, I have collected all of my information from the previous year's growth and harvest. What worked, what didn't work, what was good, what was bad, what was ugly. So you sit down and you start planning. This is the queen of the wind side where you're doing your planning for next year. You're sitting back and you're going, okay, I, I know these crops worked. I know these crops didn't. I'm now going to plant these crops. On the hunter side, you go, what about this? Well, maybe my crops didn't work because I don't have this knowledge that I need to have. And so you take some of that time and you learn new planting and harvesting techniques or irrigation techniques or whatever may have been a problem or an obstacle. You're now learning a new skill set during that time. You're going out into the darkness and you're gathering something and bringing it back to yourself, the community. This is where both come into play. So you have your planning and you have your active growing in knowledge and wisdom because this is the time where you're going to be inside more. You're not going to be able to be out frolicking in the yard and being lost in the woods, having all that fun, you don't just sit inside wasting the time. You're either resting, which is, I think, what you're about to bring up, but 
if you're resting, you're still doing something. If you're sitting in stillness in contemplation or in meditation, you are actually going into the darkness and you're strengthening your mind, bringing back those things. As Charles said, with even meditation, when you go out into it or you go out journeying into the other worlds, you got to remember to come back. you got to come back. you got to come back. It's having that balance as well where you're doing those plans, learning and growing. If you remember on Lunasa, we started making contracts. Why? Because the harvest is coming in. So we're trying to figure out what all we need to bring that harvest in. So we started making our new plans here, getting ready for that first planting come Emil. The cycle is continuing so that we can continue the work through the, the, the summer and get to that next harvest to bring more in. We have been aligning ourselves with the seasonal cycles. Right now, we need to be, if we haven't done it already, counting our seeds. What has come in? What do we have the ability to plant for the next year? What will we be able to do that with? What would work better? What do we want to work better? What new things do we want? All of this is going out into the darkness. This is all shadow weaving. This is why a lot of times I kind of giggle when people talk about their New Year's resolutions, because I sit back and I wonder to myself, at least, did they actually spend the several months leading up to New Year's Eve thinking about what those resolutions should be? Because that's the time of planning, of preparing, of figuring out what you want that to be so that when you make that commitment and getting to that midpoint and getting on your way to Embo, you're ready to actually make those declarations. And you're not just making them impulsively in the moment, being frivolously making them where you're, where of course a lot of them aren't kept because they spent so little time building up to it or planning for it. There's no respect or time spent on it. I've said this in some of our previous live streams. I really do mean this, which you can catch our live streams over at youtube.com slash at creations paths. We're creations paths on YouTube. I'll check and see some of the older live streams. I don't believe in New Year's resolutions for this very reason, because very much they are just that. Since this is our pagan New Year, since we just went through that, with the Jewish New Year of Rosh Hashanah, we went, we're now at the vegan New Year of Samhain. Th this is a time to do this reconsideration because we're not in the midst of the darkness, which is where most people want to make it, where that urgency is just too extreme. We're at the point of the harvest. We're at the point of we have what we have. Let's see what we can do going forward. There's another tact when dealing with this kind of mystical darkness that is very important, and that is giving ourselves the license and the right to let go. There are times when you have to realize you have taken on too much and you just can't anymore. Sometimes that means taking projects that you love and letting them wander out the gate, out into the dark lands where you may find them again and pick them up, bring them home and fi finish them. But sometimes you're just letting them out to run wild. Hopefully maybe to find somebody else who will take care of them and bring them to the place that they need to be. This time of year is one that is best used for reflection. That could be an active or a passive reflection. That's again, that difference between the active hunter and the queen of the winds. The other thing that we have to learn from the queen of the wind is wind is powerful. It is invisible. It can be as gentle as a caress on you. It can be as cold as the most hateful glare. It can be as warm as the most gentle smile, and it can be as savage and strong as the most vicious strike. Wind is not a thing. It is many things that we apply this one word to. That is very indicative of our lives. This is the time for us to realize that we are all multifaced, that we are all a colony of not individuals, but die that there are many little parts of us on the inside, each wanting its own thing. Once we start recognizing this multifaceted nature, they're all still me. They're all still you. But again, sometimes the wind is harsh. Sometimes the wind is kind. Sometimes the wind appears to have stopped. The air is always moving. Once you start realizing that we have this quality in us, like the wind, and we start realizing, oh, well, that's the gale in me that just wants to blow strong. That's the gentle breeze in me that just wants to calmly 
blow through and we start seeing these different parts of ourselves, this can empower us to deal with them in ways that are fresh and rewarding and very beneficial. But you have to enter that dark place where for a while you stop thinking of yourself as me, that, that place beyond the generalized ego of I am state your name here. Allow yourself for at least a brief period of time to enter that place of we are and figure out what part of you is that little child that messed up while playing a game when you were in elementary school that still has a resentment for people that lord the rules over people. That it's not that you're actually anti-authoritarian or a rebel. You just are spiteful because of that moment in your past that you don't even realize it's playing in your mind when somebody tells you what the rules are. This is a very deep practice to get into. Active imagination is very good for this. I talk about active imagination a lot. Maybe we should do more episodes about that. Let me know in the comments if that's something that you want. We really need to inspect who we are because in the hustle and bustle that we're getting to with spree and summer and the harvest in the fall, we often don't have the time to sit and be reflective. In this time of year, it's cold outside. It's dark. We don't want to really go out as much sometimes. It gives us ample time to sit and do this inner work. I am very much of the point of view that all inner work is work in darkness. Because close your eyes, and what do you see? You see that darkness behind your eyes. It very much is. It's also a very powerful place to hunt in, to go into, to find those answers. Because we are a collective and made up of all those different parts, when some parts are failing our individual self or not working as good as we would like, it can be quite powerful to go in and hunt in there in the darkness of oneself and find out why, what's causing it. Because sometimes you can find healing in that answer. And sometimes the healing is acceptance that it is just that way now. Like, sometimes it is actually going, oh, I have been depriving this part of myself that needs X, Y, and Z. So if I would just give it more of X, Y, and Z, it would actually work much better. Your hunter needs to be a good, right, and proper Batman who has the, the ability to be a philanthropist and give grants to places that need grants, will stop what everything that he's doing to sit by a wounded child and give them aid. And when push comes to shove, will punch the bully in the face Yep. to save, uh, save others. Yeah. Your hunter needs to be the Batman that can do all of that. If your hunter can't stop to aid a wounded child or a crying child, you need to temper your hunter. Because that's all part of the hunt. That is all part of making us safe and keeping us full and secure as a community. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you have, don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, all the things. If you have any questions or if you have any tips on how you embrace this, this dark time, don't forget to leave it in the comments. If you're listening to us on YouTube or Spotify, you can leave a comment right there anywhere else. Even if they say that you can leave comments, they do not at us though. You can leave a comment there because engagement is awesome. But then head over to creationspast.com, click on chat, and you can leave a comment there. We'll be able to see it and respond to you. And while you're there, if you happen to have any money, you can think about joining a membership. You can also support us on Patreon or Kofi. I am CE Dorset on both. That goes to help us keep the lights on, keep food on our table, and keep a roof over our heads. And thank you to everybody who does that. All righty. As we're going out, I think it might be a good thing to invoke our hunter right now. O oh, mighty hunter who stalks these dark nights, help us to have the food on our table to nourish and sustain us. Keep us free from threats and all that would do us harm and help us to find the lost and bring them home safe. Amen. Amen. Hey,